often I say this in class. I said, I tell the students, I said, but hey, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's rare that I hear other people say that. But occasionally I have heard that. And, you know, I write their names down. Because I say, oh, yeah, I'm not the only person who said that. And, and I think I'm in pretty good company with other, you know, scholars. And even a few years ago, we had the Washington State Supreme Court come here. And I heard one of the, the justices on the Supreme Court saying, you know, it's important to remind ourselves that we don't know everything. That we, I can't remember if, if she said, we don't know the answer to everything, but she said, yeah, we, we, I have to remind myself that I don't know everything. And I was curious to know, well, do the other justices, would the other justices agree? And one of the justices said, in jest said, yes, I agree that justice so-and-so does not know everything, you know? <laughs> but it's, it's important that no matter what we think, we could always be wrong. And I take that seriously. I definitely have my views. And over the years, I've, I've, I think I've, I've become more comfortable revealing to students my biases. I tell them, I said, this is my bias. What I mean, this is my belief, right? This is my belief. I don't always know why I believe that. And just because I believe something for this reason doesn't mean that other people think that's an adequate reason. I believe I have certain biases and I try to be upfront with that. And I try to model that it's important, right? We have, we all do what we think is right. I try to model that so that other students feel comfortable saying what they think. If they're willing to say, and I could be wrong, no matter how horrendous or biased or bigoted or racist, I think as teachers, we're looking for honesty. If students just parrot what they think the consensus is or what they think their friends want to hear, I don't see how we can teach or educate. Education right, is, is based on this idea that, that there is truth. You know, whether you believe in big truth or, you know, big T, capital T, truth or small t, truth, reality is supposed to be based on what's real, what's true. And as a teacher, I want students to see the truth. I want to see the truth. I don't know if there's anyone out there who doesn't want to know what's true and what's real. And to make sure that what we think and believe is, is, is aligned with, with what we think is true and real and good and right. And, and yet, if we're human, I don't see how we can always think that we could never be wrong. And so if someone espouses a view that seems really crazy or stupid, if that person is willing to say sincerely, but I could be wrong, then there's room for growth. You know, I, I've told students that. If you think you know something, okay, then you, that's an area where you're not gonna grow. Unless you get smacked upside the head, then maybe you'll see, okay, you know, sometimes intellectually speaking, you know, we get, oh, wow, I didn't think of that. It is important to understand that um, we're all trying to do what we think is right. And no matter how, how much you may disagree with another person, I tend to believe everyone wants to do what they think is right. But I guess that's an important step to seeing that, that we could be wrong and we have to be open to that possibility. I think that would be a lot more healthy for political life or public life if we weren't so sure about what we do. The, the, the thing with, with uh, dialectical uh, pedagogy is the point of showing the extremes is to say, don't go there, right? But in a way, it's, it, I tell students, it's easy to argue the extreme, right? But it's when I think about the problems with that, that's when uh, you know, I say, well, yeah, but you know, so what do, you, what do you do? It's really important to be able to see what the extremes are so that you don't go there. That maybe there is this, you know, the, this, the, the happy medium, the tension. I say, you know, balance is not absence of tension. It is when everything, you're pulled in different directions. That's when you have balance. It's not when there's no tension. It's when the tension is, is just right that you can stay straight. And then I tell them, and I don't know what balance is. <laughs> We're constantly pulled in so many directions. And so, yeah, if we want to stay on the, the straight, the narrow, whatever you, you call it, the balanced position. It's a constant negotiation between things that are pulling us in, in different directions.